Hey guys, welcome again to Whiteboard Thursday. And today I have a Google interview question, which is basically if you're given an array where each element in the array corresponds to an index within the same array, how do you determine whether there's a cycle in the array or not? Before I get into it, at the end, I'll tell you which problem I'm going to cover next week. So you can get a head start and try it out yourself before you go about watching the video. So let's get right into it. Let's go to an example just to understand this a little better. So I'll pick an easy example that has a cycle. So let's say we have an array and the first index is, uh, the value of the first index is one, then it goes to two, then it goes back to one, it goes to three, um, maybe it goes to four, and then it goes to eight. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually making a few assumptions here. So let me just clear those with you. Yeah. Will we always start at the first index of the array? Yes, usually. Okay. The second is, you notice that I put eight over here, mm -hmm. that basically I want at least one number in this array to be out of bounds. And out of bounds is any number that's not between zero and array.length minus one. Mm -hmm. What that will tell me is that the cycle has stopped, you know? Um, because if there isn't a number like that, then it'll just keep on going. So there's obviously a cycle. Yeah. So is that a good assumption to make? Yeah, you can also consider negative numbers as a stop to your cycle. Okay. Perfect, yeah. perfect. So, all right. So I will follow the classic rabbit and, uh, rabbit and turtle technique, uh -huh. which is that I have two pointers. One is a fast one and the other one's a slow one. And I'll illustrate what exactly I mean. So let's say I have two pointers, P and Q. Yeah. <clears throat> For every two steps that P takes, Q takes just one. And if P and Q meet, that just means that P looped around uh, once, that means there's a cycle and then met Q yeah. back. So um, let's say I'm moving forward with P. So as the value is one, I want to go to index one, right? Yep. So I'll go, P will move to index one and I'll erase it from there. Now we'll want to go to index two. So P will go there and I'll erase it from here. Now P completed two iterations. Yeah. At each iteration, I actually check whether or not P equals to Q. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then we have found a cycle, right? So now Q will iterate just once and it'll go here. And P does not equal to Q yet. So we'll keep on going. P will go to one. At this point, P equals Q. Yeah. So we just found a cycle. So this is the algorithm that I'll follow. Mm -hmm. um, if you're clear on this, then I'll just jump right into the code. Yeah. Okay, you so let me... All right, so let me pseudocode this out. So what will be the <coughs> stopping condition if there is no cycle at all? So if, if, um, if any value that I encounter is out of bounds, negative or the number eight over here, yeah. you know, if that's the case, then I stop right there. If not, then I only stop when P equals Q because there has to be a cycle, Yeah. right? Okay. So let's say I have a function Let's call it. Can you just write as what little cycle for once? Yes, sure. Let's say I have a function. Let's call it cyclic. And it takes in an array. Yeah. And then we have two pointers. Let's say initially the two pointers are at index zero. So mm -hmm. let me say p equals zero. Q equals zero, yep. right? And then I can actually enter a while loop. Mm -hmm. And the only time I exit the while loop is if I meet one of those conditions and you'll see. So I'll have while true, let's say, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's the first condition? Uh, the first condition is that if P or Q are out of bounds, I just want to return false. So um, if P is less than zero or, so I'll just say or it's pseudocode, yeah. Q is less than zero or P is greater than um, or equal to array dot length mm -hmm. or Q is greater than or equal to array dot length. If that's the case, then we just return false. 
right? Mm -hmm. Now, if that's not the case, then, um, then we increment P. Mm -hmm. So I'll say uh, P plus plus, right? No, actually not P plus plus. P will need to equal to whatever array dot P is. Yeah. So P equals array P, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now at this point, I just incremented P by one mm -hmm. or by one step. And I'll need to check whether P equals Q. So I'll say if P, um, so I'm checking. So at every point, P and Q are at a particular index, yeah. right? So all I need to check is if P equals Q, if that's the case, then return true, yeah? yeah? Returning true or returning false will break from the while loop. Now, um, then I move on. If it didn't really satisfy the condition, I'll say um, increment P again. Oh, yes, you're right. I'll need to check this condition again. Because if P, actually, I'll just need to check this condition for uh, P. If P is out of bounds, then I stop right there, right? So if P is less than zero, or P is greater than equal to array.length, return false, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll need to check this condition at every stage uh, when I increment P or Q. Okay. So now let me increment P again. Array P. This is in the same while loop, right? This, this is all in the same while loop. Yes, this should be indented to the right a little bit. Yeah. Um, so you are incrementing P twice. That's why you ex have them in the same while loop. Exactly, yes. Yeah. All of our code is going to be in the same while loop. After the while loop, you're not really going to do anything okay. because this while loop is going to go on forever. We have to return yeah. something within this loop. So um, p equals array p, okay. right? And then I'll have the same condition. If p equals q, return true. And that's it. We're done checking p or iterating p. Okay. Now let's focus on q. Now we have already checked the condition for q. Right, so we don't need to check the out of bounds condition, but I, I can just say if, um, no, first iterate. So I'll say Q equals array Q. Mm -hmm. And now I'll say if P equals Q return, return true, right? So now, when this while loop ends, let me just make sure that this will actually work. When this while loop ends, we'll go back over here. Mm -hmm. We will check the out of bounds again, mm -hmm. which makes sense because I just incremented um, Q. And then we'll increment P again. So this makes sense. Yeah. And if this goes on, then eventually it'll detect a cycle. Now let's also go to an example where there, there isn't a cycle. So let's say <clears throat> I have an array that looks like this. And the classic example of not having the cycle is that each index points to the next index. So let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? Mm -hmm. So P will start here, it'll go there, then it'll go there by the time Q is there, right? Then P will increment here, here and then Q by the time will be here. And then P will come here, we'll check the out of bounds and we'll stop right there. So there is no cycle. Yeah. So I think this logic works in, in both the conditions. So what about the complexities? Um, so the time complexity of this algorithm is O of N. Yeah. I'm not computing it over here because it's like a, it, I think it involves like a long proof and it's just out there, but this al algorithm is very well known. Um, the time complexity is O of N, and we are not really storing anything in auxiliary space, mm -hmm. so that's going to be constant. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, make sure you hit the like button below. And next week, I'm going to cover a problem which deals with an algorithm that one of your code editors probably uses, which is basically if you're given a string with a bunch of parentheses, how do you determine whether those parentheses are balanced or not? 
So make sure you subscribe so that you get notified when the problem comes out next week. And I'll see you next week.